bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. This is Forestry Awareness Week. Grand Bahama is known for its rich history of pine forest, and for this reason it was chosen as one of the locations to take part in this observance. A special workshop was held at the Sir Charles Hayward Library today in commemoration of this global initiative. Megan Shepard was there. This is Forestry Awareness Week around the world and here on Grand Bahama, a number of entities have come together to educate and inform high school students on Grand Bahama's rich history of pine forest. Director of Forestry in the Ministry of Environment and Housing, Christopher Russell says, this is a relatively new sector for the country. Forestry is the art and science of managing either natural forest or man-made forests. Here in the Bahamas we have all natural forest, pine forest being the dominant species that most of us are aware of. And so the intent is going forward to establish what is referred to as a national forest estate for the Bahamas, which means we will be identifying appropriate areas of forest, including pines, uh, wetland mangrove systems, and our broadleaf forests to be declared as part of a national forest estate of the Bahamas. And so we are identifying appropriate areas throughout the country, particularly in the Northern Islands initially, to have those areas protected and declared and gazetted by law as protected forests for future management purposes. Russell says a number of locations have already been identified. Well, the eastern keys of Grand Bahama are very important. They are now a part of the national park system of the Bahamas. We also include them as part of our national forest estate. And of course, the, the eastern of the island as well will be also declared as a forest reserve going forward. And of course, in Abaco, we have many areas in Abaco from Treasure Key in the north going south as far as Sandy Point area will be declaring certain areas as well. And of course, Andros being the largest island has the most forest resources in the country. And so we've identified areas in Andros as well. Assistant Professor of Chemistry at the College of the Bahamas, Dr. Andrew Moxie says that a study began about two years ago to document and evaluate the changes in the pine forest, particularly on the northern coast of Grand Bahama. He says there is a visible change occurring within the pine forest. The pine species is, is no longer the dominant species in the forest. Uh, what will replace it uh, is still uh, left, um, is still un undetermined, but uh, we're monitoring it and hopefully we'll be able to um, project in a, in a few years a little more accurately how the forest may look in the next 50 to 100 years. Megan Shepard, Sedanes, Network News. Thanks, Megan. And in keeping with Forestry Awareness Week, two special tree planting ceremonies were held on Grand Bahama today. The first was planted at Columbus House, home for the boys with the Rotaract Club. Then a few hours later, a mature indigenous yellow elder tree was planted at Rebirthers Senior Citizens Home. Residents of the home looked on as Chief Counselor of Freeport, Shavita Campbell, Director of Forestry Unit with the Ministry of Environment and Operator of the home, planted that tree. This year's theme is Forest and Water. Friday, the Forestry Awareness Committee will hold an assembly and will plant a tree at Alpha Omega Christian School in honor of Dr. Leslie Minus. The 18th Annual Coconut Festival is a little over a week away, and coordinator of the product department at the Ministry of Tourism, Elaine Smith, says this popular cultural event is expected to attract hundreds of persons to the entire eastern island. Tourism role in the festival is to assist the facilitation of cultural exchange between locals and visitors by ensuring a wholesome showcase of culture bringing to the main stage live performances including the Grand Bahama District of the Poli Royal Bahamas Police Force Pop Band and DMARC. The Ministry of Tourism is proud to partner with the residents and descendants of Pelican Point in hosting the 18th Annual Coconut Festival and we look forward to facilitating yet another opportunity for significant economic injections into the local community. Paulette Thomas of the Pelican Point Coconut Festival Committee says once again visitors will see an unlimited amount of coconut creations. We've made all efforts to further beautify the site. Uh, we've addressed the parking congestion by designating a parking area. We have some great prizes for giveaway. And when it comes to food, everything coconut. We've also intensified activities for guests. 
And this event will take place on Easter Monday, March 28th in Pelican Point. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Welcome. Today I will conclude my discussion of what we classify as a medical emergency. Sometimes it can be difficult to know when we should visit an emergency room and when we should wait to see a doctor at his or her office or at a community clinic. Most of us know how to tend to a minor cut or scrape at home and are familiar with the signs of a heart attack or stroke. But what about when we're not sure if a swollen ankle needs an ice pack or a trip to the emergency room? Here is a list of just a few emergencies to keep in mind. If you have trouble breathing, passing out or fainting, unusual or bad headache, especially if it started suddenly, suddenly not able to speak, see, walk or move, or weakness or drooping on one side of the body, if you inhaled smoke or poisonous fumes, if you have a possible broken bone, especially if the bone is pushing through the skin, coughing up or throwing up blood, a severe allergic reaction with trouble breathing, swelling and hives, if you have a high fever that does not get better with medicine or associated with a headache or a stiff neck, throwing up or loose stools that does not stop, poisoning or overdose of a drug or alcohol, and finally, thoughts of suicide or seizures. If you have any of these, please seek medical attention immediately. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Stay with us for Cardo Live, we're to check on sports when we return.